Hey, what's up, everybody? I'm John Schnepp. I am at Torpedo Comics here in Las Vegas. I'm with Joe Hahn from Lincoln Park. He's also a comic book sweaty. Did you just call me a sweaty? Yeah. What does that mean? What's up? I'm Brad. I'm Mike. And we are in Lincoln Park. Well, thanks We're for being part Lincoln of this. Park. We're from Lincoln Park. I live in Lincoln Park in Chicago. I actually don't live there, but I am in Lincoln Park. So let's talk about some comic books. We're in one of the greatest comic book stores I've ever been in, especially in Las Vegas. I mean, just looking around here, I can't stop sweating. I want to buy everything. What is your big comic that got you into comic books? Uh, I remember being a kid and just going to the grocery store and looking at the comic book rack and seeing The Incredible Hulk. There was one cover, it was a green cover, and he's doing this like thing. And then I remember also seeing um, the Hulk holding up a giant rock and all the superheroes underneath for Secret Wars. Oh, nice. And I was like, that's pretty interesting. Like, I wanna, I'm gonna get that and check it out. And that, that's where it kind of started. Actually, I think they've got that issue right here. Let's check it out. Okay. That's it. So I think this, is this yeah. it? Yeah, I, this, this uh, book, when I went to the grocery store when I was, I must have been in third grade or something like that. I don't know if it was the colors, the art, Right, or whatever. totally. Well, and, I mean, uh, Marvel at this time were doing a lot of different things. They were doing those chromium covers. They were doing like all these kinds of covers. This definitely has kind of like super vibrant color cover that affected me and then just eventually just became a big comic book fan. Joe's the main comic book guy. I mean, I, I grew up reading a couple. I think sure. Fantastic Four was actually one of my favorites. Yeah, same here. Um, also, just being half Japanese, I, I, I love the Usagi Yojimbo series. Yeah, I mean, I kind of got into Godzilla, Gamera, and all the monsters, uh -huh. and that's why, for me, Fantastic Four was my gateway drug, too, because that's all monsters and yeah. you know creatures yeah, and stuff. Yeah, it sucks that they've never, I feel like they've never really nailed that. That Not group, yet. you know? But Not someday, yet. maybe. They keep trying on Spider-Man, and they finally, yeah. I feel like they finally maybe got that one right. Here's a whole bunch of the very early Todd McFarlane spawns. Oh, yeah. I think I have all these. These are cool, but if you actually look to the, the past a little bit, to the Spider-Man, when he was doing that run, that was epic. I particularly <laughs> love the way uh, McFarlane used to draw Spider-Man's webbing. You know, it was like oh, super yeah, yeah. weird. Like just With a, the little coils yeah. around it. Yeah, everything and... he drew, very, very like arachnid elements to yeah. this, you know, the Spider-Man. Uh, when I was young, I saved up my, my lunch money so I didn't need it at school, so I could go every Wednesday to the comic book shop. And I remember when his books came out, that was an event for me. Um, so Todd McFarlane stole your lunch money. No, 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 no. <laughs> I, I happily donated it and got That's it. That's right. No, you got some flavor back. I got, I got an ROI for that. Well, let's talk about Lincoln Park for a minute. So okay. Lincoln Park, you guys have a brand new album. How is that different from the journey that you started out with Lincoln Park? One More Light is representative of who we are at the moment. We wanted to, uh, to write a record um, that represents the 40-year-old version of us and to be really open and honest with things going on in, in our lives. For me, this is maybe the first album where my experiences as a parent, as a literal brother in my family, like a member of my actual family, and then a member of my family in the band and my, my friends, like they manifested themselves in every single song on the record. If you were making something that's honest, people could connect to it. They could love it, they could dislike it. At least you know I made something truthful. And I think that's our responsibility. Tell me what I've gotta do. There's no getting through to you. It's a bit of a mellower record because I think there's um, a reflective quality to it. It's not as uh, grinding and heavy yeah. as uh, some of our other records, even though the first single is called Heavy. Ironic, isn't it? <laughs> So we are in the golden age of comic book movies and television shows. Like when I was a little kid, they had like a comic book movie every three years and sometimes it sucked. So you had to wait another three years for another one. So I love the Fantastic Four. They're my favorite characters. Of course, most of the movies that had involved the Fantastic Four just completely fucking suck. So we can't even really talk about those. What are the comic book movies that spring out to you? Uh, I like the, what they've been doing with the Marvel Universe lately. I grew up with, with a brother all my friends were dudes, and so we always like gravitated to all the boy shit. And I have girls now, and I'm kind of like bummed out sometimes that there aren't super strong 
kick-ass girl role models, so a movie like Wonder Woman. Like, maybe that's one that my kids will get to see and be like, she's a badass. The original Superman movies were transformative for me. Yeah. Even though the effects in that era, they almost seem comical, there's a soulfulness to it. There's a, there's a magic to that, like, low-tech. Yeah, for sure. Effect. I did love Logan. I thought that was, like, the first passionate version of of his character. Yeah, I agree with you 100%. Logan was fantastic, and they really nailed the Wolverine character. Uh, you know, Wolverine has had such an amazing history. Let's check out the first appearance of Wolverine over at Superman's Fortress of Solitude. All right, let's do it. Here we are, we're in front of the Superman's Fortress of Solitude. That's right, these are like some of the most amazing firsts that I've seen. Everything here is museum quality. Totally. We're gonna talk to John about this. So you, John, why don't you come over here and like give us some knowledge about this whole slabbing thing. This is John, this is the owner of Torpedo Comics. Hi, Joe. Hi. Hey man, you got an incredible comic book story. Thank you very right? much, thank you very much. It's really fantastic. You might also recognize him as the drummer of System of a Down. Oh, this, on Tuesdays though. Just Tuesdays, every other day he's rocking this store. Man, this is an incredible wall. Tell me about the slabbing system. What is this? So it's essentially a way for people to have confidence in what they're buying. You know what you're getting. The grade's right there. You can do a little research and find out what it's going for as far as prices. Right. And then you pick up a book and you have confidence in it. Well, this grading system, I mean, this, this, this is big boy stuff. So here we have uh, Hulk 181. This is one of the best investments. It's the first official appearance of Wolverine. I had a copy when I was a little kid. I sold it when I was in college. Wish I didn't sell it when I was in college, but hey, check it out. You can always buy it again as an adult. That's the greatest thing about being an adult, having a job. You can spend your money the way you want. You can't do that when you're a little kid. It's tougher. Let's check out your Bank of Gotham. Now, this is where all the super sweat lies, right here. This is really incredible. I mean, these are just priceless comics. To me, like some of the, the best comics. Just tell me about these comics that you got in here. Well, first of all, it's all the stuff that I could not afford when I was a kid. So it's really a pleasure to have them now. And I'll start with a couple of really great keys. So right up here, you have the first appearance of Spider-Man. Now, not all the uh, characters appeared in their own books first. For example, the Fantastic Four, which we'll show you a copy of in a minute, did appear in their own title. The Hulk appeared in his own title, but most characters appeared somewhere else. And what they were doing at the time was they were trying out the characters in different books. Usually the books weren't selling very well. So Amazing Fantasy was nearly canceled and that was pretty much the last issue. This uh, copy right here is restored and it's signed by Stan Lee, which of course makes it very special. That's $125,000. If it was unrestored, it would be about a million four. Wow. Then you have the first appearance of Doctor Doom, which is my favorite character of all time, in uh, Fantastic Four number five. So here we have something that is unique because it is the best known copy in the world. It is a 9-8 copy of the first appearance of Electro. That's about $75,000. So this is the first appearance of Ant-Man in Tales to Astonish. Again, they weren't printing a lot of these books. You know, that's why they're so unique and rare. Marvel really was almost going to go bankrupt at the time. They were down to like maybe 10 titles. When Stanley came in, he completely revitalized it with the Fantastic Four. You have a Fantastic Four One, a Fantastic Four One, and a Fantastic Four One. Wow. One of my favorite books, first appearance of the Fantastic Four, and it's kind of what started it all. And then right behind you down there, we have one of the best covers from that era, which is X-Men One. That's an excellent 8.0 grade. I think Joe has one. I have one, one, yeah. Yeah, great book. I think you bought it for me, didn't you? Yeah. So maybe you'll sell it back to me at a good deal. Probably not. <laughs> but I'm happy to buy it. Hey, now that we've been in the vault, we've checked out your entire store. Joe, let's pick out some comics that you want. Okay. That's, that's the fun part, right? Yeah. All right, let's, let's do, it. do it. Why is everything so heavy? Why is everything so heavy? Check it out, Visionaries. This is like, this is the Daredevil that Daredevil needs to be. You recommend? Yeah. Okay, I'll pick up one of those. 
Have you ever checked out the John Byrne Fantastic Fours? This little run right here is like pretty... That was it? This is pretty badass. Incredible. You ever read The Invisibles? It's fucking awesome. Really? Yeah. Oh, you know what? We were talking about 100 Bullets right here. Oh, yeah. I should get the. I need to get the first one, right? The covers for this, too, all oh, done yeah, by yeah. Dave Johnson. Yeah, that guy's awesome. Nice tats. There's a Jim Lee Joker on this guy's arm. What? Look at all these oh, Jokers. Wow. Every Joker. That is a fun Thor. If you like Thor. If you yeah, don't like Thor. I don't even like really think about it, but that was, I was really into Thor when I was young, too. I'm gonna get more books. How long were you in the, this studio, like, rocking this? Well, I think we were, from beginning to end, it was more than a year. It might have been 15 months or more. The, the process of making the album was incredible. To just be in the room with talented people, with my bandmates, with all the collaborators that came through our windowless asylum. I feel like I made a lot of friends making this record. So you've got your haul right here, Joe, but what is going to put the icing on the cake? I'm going to pick up this uh, Thor 165. It's the first full appearance of Adam Warlock, who's going to be in the next Guardians of the Galaxy film. So it's an investment. I'll probably sell it back to John for 10 times the amount. Damn. As usual. All right, That's, let's get that for yeah. you. That's some good Kirby flavor right there. We'll give you the usual Johan discount, which means I make no money. But hey, it's all good. All right, Enjoy cool. your book. Thank you. I want all these books, John. You have all these books. Hey, you got a lot of flavor right here from Torpedo. I'm gonna give you these Slayer comics I wrote from Dark Horse. Awesome. Bam. Cool. Oh, thanks, man. Enjoy this. You got some amazing stuff to read. Yeah, yeah, I'm excited. So we're here at Torpedo Comics. Thanks so much, Joe, for hanging out, getting a bunch of amazing comics, including that 165 Thor first appearance of Adam Warlock. That one's just gonna keep going up in price. Thank you so much, John. You have an amazing store here. Thank you for being a part of it. And uh, hey, everyone is welcome. And definitely pick up Lincoln Park's One More Light. You should be listening to that while you read your brand new comics that you just bought at Torpedo Comics. Let's get the hell out of here. Let's, Let's go. go. Let's get a bite. All right.